Hello and welcome to the Hedonistic Way at Midday Show. I am Renee Main and I am super excited to introduce you to this epic human because she is a catalyst. She is a social entrepreneur who is bringing the education system into the 21st century. Something had to change because the stats are definitely not getting any better. They are getting worse. And we are having and unafraid to have the difficult conversations. It affects every single person on this planet, regardless of culture, religion, location, ability, gender, and race. It affects all of us. And this woman is perfect for this huge undertaking and we need to listen she has excellence dedication and passion oozing throughout her blood and a thirst and vision to create a new tomorrow teach children emotional intelligence teaching them to have complete control over their emotions and their pleasure i am so excited that this woman is innovating sexual health so we can empower the future generations to come so they me and step into their fullest potential i welcome to the show the amazingly talented jasmine hello Hello. I'm excited to be here today. Thank you very much, Renee. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. I really felt called to reach out because as I mentioned to you, um, you know, early when I first reached out, a couple of shows ago, we had a panel discussion around sexual assault and a mutual friend of ours, Jess Ewing, was on the show and he mentioned you in that, in that show. So I felt really called because it's a conversation that, I think we all really need to rewrite and educate ourselves on how to go about having this conversation because we're, the conversations we have impact everybody around us and they are so important. And I know that you are doing amazing things with Sacred Pathways and entering into and educating our children in high schools and in schools before we press live here, we were talking about safety and I want to ask you about, first of all, how did Sacred Pathways come about? Why are you so passionate about it? And what role does safety play within all of us? Cool. Um, so Sacred Pathways, um, I went through some pretty life-changing circumstances about a couple of um just over two years ago and I was actually I was in Nepal I was in a um, little uh town in the jungle called Chitwan um where there's like tigers going across the street and I was on a I was on retreat there for a number of weeks and there was a mother and daughter um who was also attending this retreat and um You know when you meet those people and you've got those instant connections like fell in love with both of them they're just so like soul connection and I and I really got to know I, I really spent time getting to know um, her daughter her daughter was um in her teenage years she was just sharing with me about her life she was sharing with me about her relationship struggles her um she really opened up to me um and it, it was in that moment that I saw so much of myself in her and it was, it was like, wow, like the things that I went through, like at a very human level, the things that I went through and the things that I have done over a decade's worth of healing traumas and getting to know who I am as a human being and as a woman and understanding relationships and even our menstrual cycles and sex and all the things that no one really knows anything about. Like I um. I it was just I just saw myself in her mm. and I'm like wow it hasn't really changed mm. they're like it's it's two generations later and things still haven't changed or one generation later things still hasn't changed yeah. and it was like and, and and then I was in this ceremony this was over a period of two weeks I was in a ceremony and I came out of this ceremony um and 
I literally walked out, went to my room and the idea, it was actually called originally called the Heart of the Feminine Project. Um, and um, I got my laptop out and within that 20 minutes, the whole business plan, the whole idea, the things that I was meant to do yeah. um, just came out of me like that. There was no writer's block, no nothing. It was just like, oh, down, it's, it's, it's right, that's where it is. And then um, we weren't allowed any contact with the outside world um, in, in this retreat. So I had to wait until I was back in Australia. And that was really the birthplace of what is now known as Sacred Pathways Education. Yeah. Um, and usually, well, in, in my usual way of going about things, I get an idea and I, as, as it's like um, in my human design, I've got a sacral authority. So I don't, I kind of don't question things. Um, some people need to sleep on things when I'm like, I listen to that thing inside of me and I'm like, I know it. I know that voice. Um, and I was like, okay, this is the only thing I'm going to, you know, concentrate on right now. So um, over, over the next six months, I created a program for teenage girls called the Heart of the Feminine Project. We did some pilot um, programs. We went on tour. There was some most exquisite young girls that um you know that that we worked with um over that period of time and parents that we spoke to um and yeah it was really successful but then more from a business perspective we ran out of money and I was like oh oh okay I need money How do, oh, oh my goodness like you know we need to be able to create sustainable businesses yeah. so um I, I didn't, I, I, I paused on actually going out to market and over the last 18 months, um, I um, have we've kind of come through the seed funding stage now, which I, I ended up funding the seed funding stage for Sacred Pathways. We've also, um, instead of going direct to young people, I think there was a moment there for me where I was like, I just really got that this isn't just about me. This isn't yeah. this is, this vision is far bigger than any one human could make a difference in this lifetime. Yeah. So we changed the business model. We changed a level of the direction, not the content. Uh, well, we tweaked the content, which we spoke about before. Yeah. Um, and um, we've done so much more research I've invested, I've invested in a lot of research um, and development to um, a to make it inclusive for boys yeah um, and we now focus on um, teacher training programs and then yeah. or we a sacred pathways education yeah. um, delivering our programs in schools and yeah. giving keynotes and, and whatnot so there's been yeah, it's been quite a transition where we're not the same organisation we were two years ago. Yeah. Um, but it's been it's been a ph ph like a phenomenal journey, yeah. and yet, yeah, people congratulate me. Yeah, and I'm like, what? We have not the piece of me that's like, we have not even scratched the surface yeah. yet, like of yeah. of of the wider vision, and and it's like we're still in this phase of, you know, there's so much to navigate. Yeah, there's that. There's that word. Yes. <laughs> and um, yeah, and and to answer your question around safety, um, in all the sexuality development work I've done in and even in the personal development world, you know, world and and whatnot, um, and even in corporate, actually, I I, I spent ten years in the mine, uh, in the resources industry, and in working in the mines, and it's like safety is our number one priority. Yeah. And if we can learn as human beings to create safety within ourselves, yeah. um, that's a level of self-leadership that we bring and teach in our programs. Yeah. Um, and if we can teach our young people that from a very, very early age yeah. around self, we don't even have to call it self-leadership. We can just, what feels safe for me right now? Yeah. And then more from a commercial perspective, we, through the lens of safety, where I'm not, I've, there's a there's a ethos that we have created in Sacred Pathways Education, which is 
be so safe that the schools and the education system and the boards and principals and the dean of students and all like that we are actually welcome my organization is welcome into those circles yeah because the conversation around sex the conversation around pleasure yeah um actually brings up has a i'm not going to say it always does but has the potential to bring up deep trauma in people so we don't actually need to do much to trigger people no. in our conversations. So, yeah. so safety and that creation, like, like, so that organisations and people, like decision makers in the education system, can feel safe with us, yeah. um, has been something that we've like really had to create yeah. um, and establish ourselves as an organisation that we are not going to corrupt your children. This is so important that we have these conversations and that the conversations are safe yeah um yeah so that was a very long-winded answer no it's it's perfect and i think you know that people need to have an understanding about you know why this is so important and you're so right is because like even we don't have to do much for people to get triggered you know mm. and so i think words can be like it can be one word that can just set someone off and so we do have to be careful and i really love that you've honored and respected that you know to be able to again like again for me that just speaks to your integrity you know to go you know what like i i'm compassionate towards you and i get it and so therefore let me create this framework so you feel safe so we can actually have this bigger conversation why is it so important that we change the conversation and what does that conversation need to be around sexuality around pleasure well um i recently actually gave a keynote at the child child and adolescent mental health conference yeah and the title of my keynote was a pleasure-centered approach yeah. to sexual literacy yeah. and protective behaviors education protective behaviors education is um another way of saying um consent and boundaries yeah we call it protective behaviors conversation in schools yeah. um and um Hmm. I had I had people running to me at the end of my <laughs> I didn't even get off stage. There's a lot of queue of people to talk to me yeah. about it because they haven't actually heard of anyone saying, well, let's have a pleasure-centered approach yeah. um, to these conversations. Yeah. And when we actually hear the word either hedonism hedonism or pleasure, yeah. uh, there's taboo around that. Yeah. You know, like it's it's like, oh, she's a she's a pleasure seeker, yeah. Or, or like everything. It's like we have sexualized um, these conversations so much that we can't actually see yeah. the true essence of what we're saying. Yeah. So when we when we talk about a pleasure centered approach to sexual literacy education, so sex ed. Mm. Um, we I'll say this on the other side of pleasure in if there's if there's a spectrum and there is yeah. there's trauma yeah. yeah and it is my belief that the current lack of education yeah. because of people either avoid it or the people who are teaching it aren't educated enough because it's not included in our in our you don't you talk to any teacher sex ed is not taught in university and even like healthy sex ed yeah. like yes they talk about biology which is mm. beautiful we need to learn about our bodies and you know understand the physical side of it and there's pleasure is just so much like you know it's, it's so much deeper and wider in its scope yeah. um so because our educators are not actually educated in this, what we're actually creating is a generation uh, 
and it's happened you know in generations before mm. as well of young people who are our future leaders they're our future politicians they're our future economists they're our future teachers ceos online celebrities all the things right yeah. um um who are disconnected yeah. from their bodies yeah. and they're disconnected and when someone's disconnected from their bodies they can't actually tune in and I know this sounds a bit woo mm. but tune in and go it's like does that actually is that actually in alignment for me is that in alignment with my values does that actually feel safe and because we don't have that education for our young people on safety yeah. what feels safe what do I want to do right now yeah. I feel like what's going to bring me pleasure I'm going to go outside and kick a ball yeah I'm going to go outside and jump on the trampoline. I want to color in. I want to go to the movies with my friends. I want to, it's like, those things give us pleasure. Maybe um, I don't want to go to that party. Maybe I just need some time on my own. Like being able to identify, you know, we're not talking about, you know, going to, um, what's that, lingerie store and, you know, looking at this, you know, sex toy section or anything like that at all. Like these conversations are age appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, that's you know, and and I cannot tell you how many parents come to me and say, I do not know how to have these conversations. Yeah. Like, what do I tell my three-year-old compared to what do I tell my 13-year-old? Yeah. It's like, do I even tell my 13-year-old? Because they probably already learned it at school and in porn, mm. which is the other level of miseducation that our young people are receiving. Yeah. So, you know, when I said before this, this is so much bigger than just me as a human being and my vision mm. um my desire and my mission is to take this curriculum into our education system yeah. so that so that our young people actually learn yeah. like about about what it is to be a human being yeah. and so that they can create that self-leadership um, and start having healthy conversations, and, w and which means that they're going to be able to make really sound decisions that are not going to cause trauma yeah. that I've had to heal, that I assert you've had to heal. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing with um, hedonistic um, conversations yeah. because we weren't taught that as young people. So the, probably the other thing I want to share around that is um, I, um, about five years ago now, I, I ran my first retreat, uh, one of my first retreats for women. Um, and so my family's really Christian, okay, super Christian. Um, and I asked my mother to come and do the catering <laughs> at this retreat yeah and I was like mum we're going to be talking about sex a lot yeah. she's like honey I've got an open mind <laughs> you, honey don't you worry I've got an open mind I was like okay okay <laughs> I trust you honey yeah. you just gotta trust me I was like okay mum okay oh my gosh okay <laughs> <laughs> anyways in um on the very first day in one of the breaks my mum came to me and yeah. she held my face she held my face in her hands yeah She's like, honey, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't teach you any of this. Oh. I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, that really, like, I'll never, ever, ever, for as long as I live, forget that moment with my mum. Yeah. Mom. Yeah. Because it's like, we can't expect our parents. Yeah. To teach us things that they don't know. No. And, and the types of relationships that their parents have. And it's just like, there needs, there's a whole undoing. Yeah, that we need to really just everyone take a step back. Yeah, breathe. Yeah, start start. Let's just bring some compassion to this. Yes, and and almost just start again. Yeah, one one oh one oh one. Yeah, yeah. Of these conversations. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. That's um, gosh. If we when you're speaking, I'm being flooded with all of these memories. You know, and that's you know. I think you're so right. It's a conversation that our parents 
you know, never had with their parents or sex was something that you just did and or you know there's there's no information like you know often and often like you know like for our parents there was no dolly magazine with the sealed section or dolly doctor or you know like there was nothing for them and so in many ways they just had to fumble through it and can you imagine like being a teenager of say our parents our mothers and having to navigate that because it's not spoken about, you know what you can't do, what you can do, but you've got all of these feelings happening inside your body and you don't know what to do with them. Like Mm. when I think back to that, I think, my goodness, I have so much compassion for what you did, you know, and I had a very liberated, you know, conversations, conversations about sex with my mum, but pleasure was never something that... (laughs) was spoken about in terms of and we spoke about again the practicality and positions and every and the frequency and all of these things but not once did I ever hear my mum say like anything about pleasure and I feel like it's such an important piece of the conversation and what most people don't realize is the chemicals of oxytocin that releases in our bodies is huge you know and like it's it's a sign you know you're saying before about you know it might sound a bit woo but there's science to this you know mm-hmm. there's, there's science there's evidence there's so much research so I really honor the work that you do and how you're doing it because um I think it does need to be done in schools and it does need to be done to the masses um Something that I wanted to ask you about is you speak about emotional intelligence Mm -hmm. and um, that is another, you know, something that I feel like our kids need to learn. They're like, it just, it's, you know, I remember like five, six years ago, that was my thing. If I wanted to do a Ted talk and it was going to be in why we need to teach emotional intelligence in schools. So Mm -hmm. I would love to ask you, why is it so important that we teach our kids emotional intelligence and what has it got to do with our sexual education and pleasure? Okay. Well, I've drawn the map. It's not actually a map, but this was associated. Put <laughs> a map of Australia, everyone. Yeah. But with – so – so, <laughs> don't, look, don't look on maps.com for the moment for my map. <laughs> this is, we, there is a direct correlation between um, emotional intelligence and mental health and sexual literacy. And the statistics around mental ill health Mm. that our country is facing today yeah our world is facing today and so i mean it is so dependent on you know like each school has their different strengths but say a school that's either really academic or a school that is really focused on sport yeah um there you know you're going to get a lot of students who either come out with op1s op2s i don't think we have ops anymore whatever their whatever their um you know high schools um um um, scores are um and what's what i believe is missing that's going to make a like phenomenal amount like difference in the lives of our children and it will increase their mental health it'll increase their performance in their actual um, intellectual education Um, and even you know their sporting like the way they navigate sport like yeah yeah like teamwork and and things like that is um, through their EQ Mm. Um, and it's my belief that there isn't enough focus on how to navigate our emotions from a very early age. This is a self-leadership conversation. This is, a, you know, I, I'm such a big believer that knowledge is power. You've, 
you know, we've heard that time and time again. Mm. And if we can widen that to knowledge is power and including understanding who we are as a human being, what is important to me? Why did I react the way I reacted? What are my triggers? How do I navigate triggers? How do I navigate relationships? Then we will not see as much trauma um, and crime and bad things that happen because our young people are given the actual tools to be able to make sound healthy decisions instead of going oh they're just a child no let's actually start teaching them you know about um who who we are as human beings it's an ontological conversation and it's only going to serve them in fact it'll 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 serve them in every area of their life Mm. in their relationships in their careers in their studies in their extracurricular activities, there's not one area of their life that will not be impacted by their levels of emotional intelligence and who they are as leaders outside of school, who they are in their friendship circles, the types of friendships that they have. Mm. So um, it it is such an important conversation and we have absolutely... um, weaved this and included this in our curriculum that we have created because sex ed and emotional intelligence uh they go hand in hand yeah um and it's and it's time to change the narrative around those conversations and 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 almost like this is that safety you know okay like we are safe we're not here to corrupt your children we are you know this is our ethos as an organization you know as, as sacred pathways that these conversations will alter the trajectory of every child's life. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and we're and we're here to impact the education system just as much as the teachers, just as much as the students. Yeah. So we've all got a part to play in in standing up for this and and and, and who we are as as adults. Yeah, my God, I'm an adult. Um, um, who we are as an, as adults and the type of world that we're creating for our children as they like as they you know come of age and mm-hmm. even when they navigate they're you know they're very confusing into tumultuous teenage years yeah. so yeah mm, it is huge and I agree like it's you know you'll hear a lot of people say you know I'm so glad I learned that algebra in school because I've never ever used it since or you know there's so <laughs> much about our education that we don't use but it's and I'm not saying that they're not important because I think that they're equally important but I also believe that emotional intelligence as you said is something that they will carry through them throughout their entire lives in every single area and um and and even who they are as teenagers they're not the same person from when they're 16 to when they're 21 you're not the same person that you are from when you're 21 to 25 to 28 to 35 to 40 yeah so being able to navigate that side of life yeah. will um support them in every area of their life yeah Absolutely. it's just my my deepest wish is that the education system and you know what there are some phenomenal um there are some phenomenal teachers out there who are in support of this. Mm, yeah. um, I'm every week I'm talking to, you know, different heads of schools and, and whatnot. And, you know, there is, there is change happening and it's, and it's wonderful to see. It's wonderful. What it's powerful to be part of these conversations. So it's not, I actually think it's not as ar- archaic as what a lot of people think. Yeah. Um, and there are people working on, working very hard on creating new conversations to empower our children. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I want to ask you, because there is so much work going on and we've mentioned a couple of times, you know, so, you know, we need to be sure that, you know, like that say like, you know, that this body of work is not corrupting 
the, the children. What do you mm-hmm. think the fear is? What, what does that corruption look like? Like what do you think the fear is that, that it might happen? Um, I, I'll give you an example. A school that I was talking to recently. Um, so they are a Presbyterian school. The Presbyterian or Anglican or no, I'll just say I'll, I'll say Presbyterian school. Okay. Um, they one of their things is that they outsource their sex ed because it's too high risk for teachers for their own teachers. Um, I I actually think that's smart mm. because. I don't 100% agree that it's too high risk for teachers, um, but fully honouring that that's what, you know, their school stance is. Yeah. Um, there's a there's another school that I um, am in conversation with at the moment um, and the person who's responsible for, um, you know, sex ed um, throughout the whole school um, shared with me recently that you know they get information and then you know it's the she hasn't really been taught this stuff yeah um so they go and um you know just kind of do a little bit of research on a subject and they go and teach it to the schools so that's where i feel like the risk is is that um because i mean what we're navigating as a society right now is around diversity and inclusion yeah you know and that that's why i actually think it's um it's going to take organizations like sacred pathways education who our sole focus is um integrity in this work um Mm. and you know like we dedicate all of our you know research and development to um you know like funding to um continually um, be up to date in these conversations. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there is a level of risk there mm. because what if, um, um, like, if this isn't this well. If you treat it like in academia, this might be just like a subject like history, you know, or geography or science yeah. or something like that. So um, we, yeah, that's that's I, I feel like is what the beauty of and uh, what's special about Sacred Pathways Education that we, um, you know, we've dedicated. Um, our research and development to this and creating safety mm. so that children are actually receiving the right information yeah. so yeah. and then also schools are navigating like their different like religious you know ethos or and or you know religious doctrines and whatnot you know there's yeah. you know there's conversations that need to be had but they might not be um in alignment with the schools um yeah. you know religious beliefs or something like yeah. that so yeah um that's also something that I navigate in, um, you know, in my conversations with teachers because some schools we have to talk about abstinence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some schools we have to talk, you know, like, re- you know, religious references to the Bible and stuff like that. Like, yeah, we need to just be really real and yeah. um, meet them where they are at in their yeah. school, um, yeah, in, the, in their school ethos and, and in, in their belief systems and go, okay, but, now let's, we can do that. That's not yeah. a problem. Yeah. We can create that safety. It's creating safety. We're going to honour that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we work our curriculum around that. So, yeah. That's yeah. so amazing. And I think that that, you know, I love that is because, you know, it's, you know, you need to be, there's that element where you need to be agile in that. You need to be fluid in that and adapt to each school's beliefs and religion and culture or whatever else um a couple of weeks ago when in when we were talking about consent and it is such a big one um you know what do you believe will be the ripple effect of you know we'll talk so a couple of weeks ago on the show we're talking about sexual assault and consent and just how common it is and I don't think that that parents and I, you know, it's really, and I've had multiple conversations with friends of mine who are gone, no, nah, it doesn't happen anymore. 
it what doesn't happen, happen anymore like sexual, sexual assault. assault yes and I'm like okay. of course it happens it happens all the time and they're like no so there's this real there's this denial piece I think that you know I know in my conversations that have come up and so people are quite shocked to think that oh this actually still happens oh you know and so what would you say to the parents of you know, of exactly why we need to change our thinking and be open to these conversations around sexual assault, sexual health, consent, you know, why is it important that we bring in this piece that Sacred Pathways offers? Uh, there was a um, really powerful, well, I thought it was powerful, um, um, some research done by La Trobe University. Um, I'm trying to pull it up on my, on my, on my computer now. Um, around, uh, there was a couple of thousand students surveyed, um, grades 10, 11, and 12. Yeah. Um, and if you actually read through those statistics which I actually addressed some of them I tried not to be too statistical yeah. at the um, child and adolescent mental health conference that I spoke at yeah. um, um, but to bring in some of the statistics around um, sexual trauma and the decisions that our young people are making for themselves yeah. um, but also how they're showing up in relationships the type of type of abuse um, and I say this with, you know, every ounce of respect um, that I can possibly bring to this conversation is um, there. I actually believe that we live in an, in an inherently traumatised world. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Which makes me really sad. Yeah. That's the, that is... In fact, I'll go beyond. It makes me sad. It 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 in it it invokes something, a life force in me. Yeah. Because our young people do not know how to show up in relationships. Yeah. Because they don't have emotional intelligence. Sorry, they do know how to show up in relationships, but they're they're fumbling. Like our parents are fumbling. Like we fumble. Yeah. Because these conversations are not being had around consent and boundaries. Yeah. What does, what's the difference between giving, um, receiving, allowing, yeah. and giving, receiving, taking, and yeah. allowing? Yeah. What, uh, on, this is more on the personal development side, but it's just as much on personal development as it is, and, you know, like sex ed is, What's the difference between a healthy relationship yeah. um, and a toxic relationship? Yeah. yeah. And then giving our young people almost like a series of questions mm. to yeah. ask themselves about how do I feel when I'm around this person? Yeah. yeah. If I have a secret, it might not be a second, it might be a desire if I've got, if I'm journeying something right now, navigating something right now. Yeah. Um, do I feel safe to tell this person yeah. what I'm navigating right now? Like there's like a series of questions that we, yeah. you know, we give our students as part of our curriculum, like to actually for, the, for them to identify what is healthy and what is toxic or abusive. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, so I don't actually believe if I was to believe that none of that existed, then we would not be seeing the statistics that we're seeing. We would not be reading um, the papers um, and, um, you know, like young people are standing up and asking for better education yeah. in this. Yeah. They really are. It's like our young people are. They're asking for it. Yeah, they are. And so I, I fundamentally do not believe that our, um, that 
you know abuse doesn't happen or toxic relationships doesn't happen mm. that's yeah. that 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 is whoever you know if you do believe that please like start doing your own research and having yeah. a look at um you know like domestic violence yeah yeah like how do you how do you avoid as a as, as a human being avoid domestic um, um, domestic violence and like what do we do in relationships when we're experiencing that? Yeah. What are the signs of well you know what are the red flags? Yeah. Do you know this is and this is around boundaries and consent. Yeah. And do you know I I I'm so fascinated because Betty Martin, mm. Doctor. Doctor, she's the late Doctor Betty Martin. Yeah. Um, you know, the wheel of consent is her work. Yeah, and she only passed away this year, I believe. But every time I revisit that conversation, I learn something new. Same. Yeah, and I teach this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. this isn't just relevant for our young people. No. And it's like when we learn, when we have these conversations, we bring a level of humanity to it and understanding and safety. Yeah. To these conversations. Yeah. And a level of self inquiry. Mm. Teach people it's okay to look at your own life. <laughs> Do you know, like, I believe that these are the conversations that are going to change the world. Yeah. I, if we, if, even communication skills. Yeah. This is the 101 of sex ed is communication skills. Yeah, absolutely. And and it starts understanding with being eight, tapping into what you want before you even communicate that, you know, and so that level of understanding and so that again that self inquiry that you speak of. So mm. yeah. So um yes, I do believe I you know it, I've had too many conversations with like hundreds and hundreds of people and educators um, and sexologists and young people and parents and guidance counsellors and, you know, like, like I, I, have, I speak with guidance counsellors, you know, and, and they might, because this is, this is not their fault, by the way, I'm not pointing yeah. the finger at, you know, guidance counsellors or the actual schools, um, or, you know, the teachers. Yeah. But, you know, guidance counsellors might come in and have a conversation with students around boundaries and consent or something like that to, yeah. the, to the knowledge that they have. Yeah. Um, um, but they're still being pulled into situations that happen, you know, because, um, yeah, they had a half-hour conversation around boundaries and consent, but that's all that they've got, you know, yeah. like the time that's been allocated um, for um, yes. these conversations. Yeah. Um, and they're still being pulled into situations that happen behind the toilet block or things that are, you know, like that our young people are navigating. Why are they navigating this is because not enough focus is being brought to the conversation around yeah. um, sexual literacy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's like we're, we're on this never-ending repeated cycle of yeah. causing trauma because yeah. we're not having the right conversations. Yeah. And and I'll I'll even go as far, and I feel like this is even a little bit dangerous for me to say this, but I will say it is our governments are pouring more and more funding every year into um cure, like into curing mental health yeah. for mental health service providers. Yeah. Which, you know, I'm grateful for those service providers, you know. Yeah. Um, um but let's have a conversation about prevention. Exactly. Absolutely. Early intervention and early prevention. Yeah. That, that is why I created Sacred Pathways Education. Yeah, absolutely. I'm completely with you all the way and, and absolutely agree. And if I've learned anything over just, you know, in my parenting journey is this conversation, it's not in a, a half-hour conversation. No. It's in multiple conversations that spanned over like you know a I lifetime. started yeah like from is like when they were toddlers like it's a conversation that I've had you know my oldest is nearly 15 my eldest so I'm like for 15 years I've navigated this this ongoing conversation and I think that we think that it's like one conversation that we have once yeah. 
and the talk is a mess. Pace. Yeah, the, the talk. There's no. There, okay, yo. There's no such thing as the talk. No. Nah. There's consistent conversations and consistent, yeah. just like levels of normality that we need to bring yeah. to these conversations, so that our children and our like our our future leaders don't freak out and make rash decisions or foolish decisions that they probably won't really experience uh, the trauma of it until or they won't even it won't even be realized trauma exactly if they even realize it like at all like I know for me in you know and we spoke about it a couple of weeks ago in the show like you know for me I didn't realize the trauma that I had over my sexual assault. And there could be, it, it was, you know, a lot of them was passed off was, oh, he was just fooling around or he was just having fun and, you know, all of these things. But it wasn't until I would say over well over a decade later that I've gone, and really it's probably maybe like 15 years later, I'm like, hang on a minute, you know, this is like, this is not okay you know, and that was assault. And that, so again, I think that the trauma, you know, and that like from a somatic embodiment perspective, which Mm -hmm. is a lot of my work is traumas trapped in the body for a very good reason. And there's a natural divine timing to that of when it's ready to unravel and unfold. But if Mm -hmm. we can like, just that trauma doesn't need to happen. You know, it's just... It's It's avoidable. It really is. It really is. And it's just about having, you know, it's about, for me, you know, like I think normalising pleasure and normalising this conversation around, you know, around consent, around, you know, around sexual education and literacy and and safety, Mm -hmm. feeling safe in the body. So, yeah. So the other thing I probably want to share on that is Mm. like the self-responsibility piece. Yeah which is not really to us. Like, okay, well, what can I be responsible for? Yeah. Yeah. We're not, and we're not going to be able to, our young people aren't going to, they might not be able to change what happened to them. Yeah. We might not be able to, anyone, any human being. Might not, but who are you, what, what, what can you do now? Exactly. And or like, what can you be responsible for in that relationship that didn't work out? Yeah, yeah. That is that's the self awareness piece. It's another layer of the conversation. Yeah. It's like, what do you mean that I've got to be responsible? Well, did you speak your boundaries? Yeah, and no, because they're not taught boundaries. That's right. In a healthy way, like like you know. So there's like it's just it's like a vicious cycle of trauma um trauma infusing lack of education that we're just seeing like over and over and over again is the cycle is because here's the thing that i've noticed is that we can you know if you haven't dealt with your trauma and you have kids and you're going through those and i'll say particularly those teenage years if you haven't dealt Mm. with your shit your kids will trigger you when they're going through that journey and that time in their lives you know Mm. it's I it's you know I've seen it happen time and time again I've seen it even like you know with my own daughters it's like there's been some things where it's like oh (laughs) so it's hard so let's just let's let me ask you so for anyone watching I okay like what are the, some of the things that I need to begin to talk about with my kids? What are some of the questions that I need to ask? What's the conversation that I need to have? Is it okay that like if, you know, what if people want to share this with their schools? Like what can parents do to begin to have this, this conversation? Uh, well, like I said before, there's no talk is a myth yeah yeah and so you know so like at a at the age of three a child isn't going to understand relationship dynamics they if when when so when 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 they ask you know where do babies come from 
you know, it's like, oh, you know, so being able to have age appropriate conversations. Yeah. I feel like the other thing, um, um, uh, the other probably two things is that uh, around this conversation is that um, if we're saving it all up for a talk one day when they're 13, um, um, perhaps to try on the idea that there's not one talk at 13, there's being able to navigate the and explore like different questions and different things as a um you know as a parent you know, no matter what age your child is um you know some of the research that we've done at sacred pathways is that um you know a lot of parents are scared of saying too much yeah they're like oh do i say that do i not say that am i allowed to say that do you know like am i going to traumatize my child you know like um and the beautiful thing about children is that they'll they'll grab what they need to grab from a conversation um at at the at at the age and level that they can comprehend and if you create that second they're just going to let the rest go and so oh are you there i feel like hello have i frozen Uh, did i freeze did i freeze you just froze there for a minute. I don't know if you can hear me. I can hear you. I have, but you're 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 frozen. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. You there? Yeah, I am here. Can you hear me? Hello. I'm back. Hey. <laughs> Hi. It was my Hi. internet. Oh, <laughs> and kicked like, me off. It, it happened. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the beautiful thing yeah. about our children, and if we create that safety in it, you know, with with um, you know, with our children, creating safety is really important. So, um, one of the I feel like we have frozen one more time. Hello, you there? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hey. So, fingers crossed. Cool. All right. Um. Yes. So you're the, saying probably that? the other thing. Um. Yeah, is creating creating that safety and so one of the, bless my parents. Um. Um, I don't ever want to bring any shame to my parents, but like, yeah. you know, I was always told like, if you come home pregnant, don't bother coming home, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, like let's, let's not say those things to yeah. our children because yeah. if I did come home pregnant at 17, yeah. um, um, I, uh, our home environments need to be a safe environment okay. and also um, don't leave it up to the internet to educate our children. Yeah yeah please um and the other thing to answer your question is um people can reach out to me via social media um we can um or our website is um, www.sacredpathways.education um or they can email our team at info at sacredpathways.com.au and i'm so open and we've got an open door policy um and i yeah my my wish is that this conversation has opened up um you know different pathways for people to think about you know sex ed in schools and what's available and you know um and if they're interested in yeah. sacred pathways education curriculum then absolutely reach out and let us know how we can be of service absolutely we will and I will put all of your details in, in the show notes as well. So to make sure that everyone mm-hmm. can absolutely find you. So um, this internet is becoming super dodgy. So let's use this to, <laughs> to, 
to to wrap up um jasmine thank you so much for being a part of this conversation and doing the work that you do because it is truly inspiring and so needed and if there's anything that i can do to help you with this then please just always reach out because um i am just with you a hundred percent of the way and um i feel super grateful that there's someone like you creating this this new paradigm in which you know we teach these kids this sexual literacy so thank you so much for being on the show and for doing what you do thank you and i'm yeah thank you for having me and thank you for having these conversations and being who you are and you know like just fully honoring the work that you're doing as well thank you mm, thank you so much jasmine see you everybody bye